everyone, it's Alice and today I'm going to share with you which book box favourites I have and haven't read. So I wasn't actually planning on doing this as part of a video. I just did this for my own interest in my spare time because I was bored and thought I would do some stats and have a look and see which fandoms were featured in my three subscription boxes the most from their first box. Now, I thought this would be really easy. It wasn't because obviously on the, their websites, some of them they don't put the exact fandoms because of copyright reasons. They'll just say like, oh, the Dark Prince banner or the Hidden City Tea. So then I had to do all this Googling and watch all these unboxings and read all of these blog posts to figure out which fandoms had actually been represented. So there's obviously a lot of fandoms that have been featured one or two times, so I only wrote down the ones that have been featured most regularly. I've already decided, because this I think will be a fun video, um, I've already decided that I am going to go back through and do like a proper spreadsheet and break it down based off of which fandoms were in which month's box so I'll be able to see how far up to date I am. I've got a feeling this goes up to February 2021 but it might not, it might go up to March or it might go up to January, I can't remember because as I said wasn't planning on doing this for a video so I just wrote like tallied it all up, it's like oh that's really interesting and then just put the notebook away and then this morning I was like actually that could be a fun video. So I'm sorry this isn't the most specific but if you like this please let me know because I will be happy to put that spreadsheet together and then if you are interested then that's also something that you can have a look at and see which fandoms you have read or which fandoms haven't been represented as much. So without further ado we're going to start with Owl Crate. So what I've done is I've worked out the top five of each box and then I've worked out the list of like the most represented fandoms between the three at the end and that's what I'm going to base it off of mostly um, because I've figured out the numbers and stuff for that. But talking about Owlcrate, their fifth most frequently featured fandom is Game of Thrones. That's the one that I would have expected in a Lumacrate. I wouldn't have expected it in Owlcrate at all. I can't remember getting any Game of Thrones stuff in Owlcrate, but Owlcrate are so solidly YA. Like, they don't do any books that are kind of crossover between YA and adult. They don't do any adult books, whereas a Lumacrate do. So it's interesting that they featured an adult fandom like that frequently. They featured six Game of Thrones items since their conception. In fourth place, we have another fairly surprising one, Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. This makes a bit more sense because they did feature Heartless by Marissa Meyer, so there was an entire Alice in Wonderland themed box, so that box by itself was a few of these items, and they've only featured seven Alice in Wonderland items, so I do think the majority of them probably came from that box and there's just been a few more over the years, but it was really interesting to see a classic in here as well. In third place, we've got A Darker Shade of Magic by Victoria Schwab. At the time of charting this all up, they'd featured nine A Darker Shade of Magic items, which is interesting because they're currently doing a four tin set um, of Red London, Grey London, White London and Black London. So depending on when I tally this up, there's going to be either another two or three to add on to that straight away. So it will go straight up to 11, like 10 or 11 items. Um, but that one's not too surprising to me because I think Alcrate actually included A Dark Shade of Magic as one of their very first boxes before I subscribed to them. So it was quite clear that they were already a fan of the first book in the series before the others came out. In second place, we have The Grishaverse. So I couldn't easily break this down because if I did, it wouldn't have been represented. But this includes books like items inspired by Shadow and Bone and uh, Six of Crows. I don't think there were any King of Scars items, but there has been a Rule of Falls item recently. So again, that would get another tally on there. Uh, it was just easier to put this all under one. And there have been 10 items from the Grishaverse in Owlcrate. So can you imagine what took first place with 29 items? Harry Potter by JK Rowling. Owlcrate was actually inspired by Harry Potter. I didn't know this before, but it's meant to be like the owl post. That was like the whole conception of the box. Um, that's the whole idea behind it. So I'm not too surprised, having like already known that, 
that Harry Potter was their most represented fandom. I'm just surprised that I didn't see that coming when I thought that this would be a good idea to tally everything up. So, out of Owlcrate's favourite books, how many have I read? I've read three books in the Grishaverse series. I've read the Shadow and Bone trilogy. I've read the first book in the Adarka Shade of Magic series. I've read three books in the Harry Potter series. And I've read Alice in Wonderland. So I've read seven, eight, eight of Owlcrate's favourite books. Which isn't too bad. But also, I haven't read any of the Game of Thrones books. I haven't finished Harry Potter. I haven't finished A Dark Shade of Magic. I haven't read the Six of Crows duology. So it's not going too well. Now we'll move on to Illumicrate. Illumicrate's a bit more of a diverse one because Illumicrate do, as I said, they feature young adult and adult and kind of crossover books. So I thought Illumicrate was going to be a bit more of an interesting one to look at. And they ended up not having anything in fifth place because they had three joint fandoms in fourth place so <laughs> we'll ignore fifth place for now we'll just go for like fourth to sixth so in joint fourth place we have a dark shade of magic by victoria schwab an ember in the ashes by sabah tahir and a kotar a court of thorns and roses by sarah j bass so out of these i've read two books in the a court of thorns and roses series and i've read one book in the a dark shade of magic series so we're already on three but it's really interesting to me that they've got five items each so that shows that Illumicrate aren't featuring the same fandoms as frequently. Because Owlcrate's lowest item count was six. And yet there's three here. So that was that, that I found interesting. In third place, they have the Grisha series with six. So again, they're not overly representing it. It's got four less items than it had in the Owlcrates. And then again, I, I've read three of the Grishaverse series. So six items for Shadow and Bone and for Six of Crows for like the whole Grishaverse. In second place, it's Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. Did not see that coming at all. I love that though because I really do like the Strange the Dream items that Illumicrate have featured. Their book sleeve is absolutely stunning. The umbrella that they included was absolutely stunning. And there have been seven Strange the Dream items in Illumicrate. And then in first place, again, I didn't see it coming, but it was Harry Potter. So Illumicrate have only featured 10 Harry Potter items in their boxes. So that is a lot less than 29. Quite clearly not as big a fan of Harry Potter as Owlcrate are. Um, but I can only remember one Harry Potter item, possibly two. I think they did a Phoenix bookmark. It might have been a magnet. Um, and they did a poster in the very, very first box that was Harry Potter themed. But like, I can't remember them featuring a lot of Harry Potter items. So I find that really surprising. So out of Illumicrate's favorite books, I've read 11 of them. Which is, again, still not actually that bad. Like, at least I'm reading some of the fandoms that they're featuring. I've read the whole Strange the Dreamer duology. Um, I've read some of A Court of Thorns and Roses. I've started A Court of Wings of Ruin now. So I'm still moving through that one. So we're getting there. And I like the fact that this is a bit more diverse as well. Because you do have An Ember in the Ashes in there. Which is nice. Um, it's not just your straight white faves up in the top for this one. Which is lovely. And now let's move on to Fairy Loot. So I haven't been subscribed to Fairy Loot for very long, um, which is one of the reasons that I wanted to do this video because I thought, well, I've only been subscribed for a few months. What have I missed in the past? I wanted to look into their old boxes and be like, why didn't I just subscribe earlier? Because I probably should have. So funnily enough, the fandom in fifth place for Fairy Loot was A Court of Thorns and Roses with 13 items. So Fairy Loot's least favourite fandom has more items than Illumicrate's most favourite fandom and more items than Owlcrate's second favourite fandom. So Fairy Loot quite clearly when they know a fandom works and when they've got a fandom that they like, they like to continue to feature it. I have also counted their monthly tarot cards in this though so it will make their um their tally is a little bit higher because they feature two tarot cards from a fandom every single month. So that's automatically two items for that fandom. And then they often do the same fandom two months in a row. So that would be four items for that fandom before you even look at the proper box items. But I wanted to include the tarot cards in there because I have been including 
the pin badges and the bookmarks and things from the other boxes so I thought that was fair. In fourth place, with 15 items included since they began, was the Shadow Hunters series. I thought when I got to this and I realised that Shadow Hunters was one of Fairy Loot's most favourite series, I was so surprised that they haven't been that high up in any of the other bo book boxes because we all know that Cassandra Clare gets a lot of special editions and a lot of love in the bookish community so I was just surprised that the other boxes hadn't been including the fandom that regularly but I have read five of the Shadowhunters books so I am not complaining. <laughs> we don't have a third place for Fairy Loot because we have two joint second places and those are the Grishaverse and Throne of Glass both with 16 items each. Again, as soon as I realised Tone of Glass was in Fairy Loot's favourites, I was like, wow, I'm surprised that it wasn't in the other box's favourites because they like A Court of Thorns and Roses. And I just assumed that Throne of Glass, with more books, the fact that it's been going for longer and the fact that it's a YA series and these boxes were originally all kind of focused at young adults, I was surprised it hadn't been featured more. So that was really interesting to me. And then in first place for Fairy Lou, with 20 items featured, Harry Potter again. <laughs> so what I learned from this was, Harry Potter sells. We already knew that. Like, it was pretty obvious that Harry Potter was popular and it was pretty obvious that a lot of bookish people would buy things because they were Harry Potter. But I hadn't realised quite how much because I'm not somebody who's really interested in Harry Potter. So if there's a Harry Potter thing in the box, I'm just like, okay, cool. And like, I just chuck it to one side. So I haven't realised quite how much they've been featured over the years. And I'm probably pretty stupid for not predicting the fact that Harry Potter was going to be the top in all three of these. But that does mean I had read 13 of Fairy Loot's favourite books. So then we get to the totals. And I've tallied all of these up. So... In fifth place, we have the Shadowhunter series with 20. This So this includes not just the top five in each, but this is like all of the tallies from all three boxes. So Shadowhunters ended up coming fifth, which was impressive considering it only featured in the top five for one of the boxes. In fourth place, we had a Court of Thorns and Roses with 23 items. In third place, we had Throne of Glass with 24 items. And again, impressive because that was only in the top five for one of the boxes. In second place, we had the Grishaverse with 32 items. And of course, in first place, considering it was first for all three boxes, was Harry Potter with 59 items. Wow. That's nearly three times as much as second place. No, nearly twice as much as second place. Nearly three times as much as third place. That is a lot of Harry Potter stuff. <laughs> and that means I got the popular books... If you add up all the books in the series and in the extended universes and things, out of the 73 book box favourites, I've read 18. <laughs> That's embarrassing. I've been subscribed to Alien Crate since their first box. I've been a subscriber to Owl Crate for five years. And the fandoms that they feature most regularly aren't even ones that I'm a part of. Which is embarrassing. Um, so I do wonder if this should inform my reading for a couple of months and whether I should attempt to read these popular series. So if I do decide to read the book box favourites, I'll probably end up putting that in a reading log for you because it'll be interesting reading things like Throne of Glass for the first time when they're that popular and that long as well. But yeah, I hope you find this video as interesting as I did. Are you surprised by which fandoms the boxes have featured most frequently? Um, would you be interested in seeing a more in-depth, detailed video about this? Like which fandoms they featured the least frequently? Which fandoms they featured the most in the shortest amount of time? I don't know, I can try and like work out stats or things like that if you're interested in them. I'm a nerd when it comes to stats, so I'm always interested in videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like this video, please give it a like. Um, if you'd like to subscribe, we'll be super duper grateful, as we always are. We post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and I have no idea what we'll be uploading next, so stick around and find out with us. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye!
So I wasn't actually planning on doing this as part of 